Fateful Findings is a work of sheer brainius. This masterful film was directed by none other than Neil Breen, a man who seems as though he was plucked straight out of a Tim and Eric skit. Hi, thanks for checking out my crowdfunding site. My name is Neil Breen. I'm a filmmaker. It's a sci-fi, a sci science fiction drama. Twisted, uh, dirty, dark, edgy, It is not a midnight movie. It's a legitimate, mainstream, full-length feature film. I shit you not, this man is the next big thing and so bad that it's good filmmaking. Quite honestly, the biggest reason I'm reviewing this film is because not enough people know about him. Not a single one of his films has even broke 500 ratings on IMD Breen. And that's not okay, America. For shame. For shame, America. So sometime last year, someone tweeted me suggesting I add fateful findings to my watch list. And I did. When I finally got around to watching it, it was one of the most magical film experiences of my entire life. There was a point in the film where I was laughing so hard that my roommate from downstairs had to come up to my room to see what the fuck was so funny. I think this scene kind of speaks for itself. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes! No, no, no! Jim! Amy! You killed him. Neil Breen, aka God, has been making films since 2005, and thankfully he is just starting to get a bit of attention. Red Letter Media covered his first film, Double Down, in their Best of the Worst series, so as soon as I saw their video, I was like, holy shit! He made the same movie twice! Dead Wife? Magic Rock? An unnecessary amount of old laptops? Hacking? It was at this point that I had realized there was something very special here, so I promptly bought every single one of his films. They showed up exactly how you see them now. Cracked jewel case, but hey, at least it's Breen autographed. Also, in the spirit of his own movies, the actual process of purchasing his films is needlessly convoluted and difficult to understand. If you want to purchase Fateful Findings, you just buy it on his website. But if you want to purchase Double Down or I Am Here, now, you have to click the link to purchase Fateful Findings, but then add special instructions to the seller to specify which movie you actually want to buy. And nowhere on the website does it say this. I literally would not have known how to purchase two out of three of your films if I didn't happen to see this post on the Fateful Findings Facebook page. So Neil Breen, if you're watching this, could you maybe update your website so that people who want to buy your movies can understand how to buy your movies? Or is the actual process of buying your movies just a metaphor? Now I'd already seen Fateful finding so I could attest to the fact that it's a perfect movie to watch with drunk friends. So naturally I invited some people over for a viewing in the hopes that I could record some genuine reactions. What I didn't realize however is that we would stay up all night watching all three of his films. And I gotta say this trilogy is quite the holy trinity. A delicious three breen salad if you will. So before we get into fateful findings let me give you a quick rundown of his first two films starting with Double Down. So first of all if you haven't seen Red Letter Media's breakdown of this film you probably should. Watching everyone lose their shit while Rich Evans desperately tries to explain the plot is probably the best thing you could watch to set your expectations for this masterpiece. This movie is absolute fucking nonsense. I would say a good 25% of the movie is literally just stock footage, and the rest of the movie is just the same scenes happening over and over again. It's seriously as though he filmed several takes for each shot, then later edited his movie together only to find out he had 25 minutes of usable footage, and then just decided, hey, what about those other takes? that I didn't use, we could just use those and then I'll have a feature-length film. It seriously feels as though that is a likely possibility. I swear to God, he runs up that mountain like 30 fucking times. Four years later, and Neil Breen releases his second feature film titled I Am Here. Now. now, this film was the last one we watched that night, so there weren't that many people left. But that didn't stop it from being mind-blowingly hilarious. I'm so happy we're watching this. And I 
feel bad for everybody. I feel bad. Oh! This oh! ain't your He's dad's a Christ. This <laughs> <laughs> is Turbo Christ. So with Neil Breen being a super intelligent hacker assassin in the previous film, he decided to make his next character even more omnipotent. And I mean, how much more powerful can a character get without just turning him into a Sabrine being? In this masterpiece, Neil Breen plays alien Jesus, kind of. Once again, this film is quite repetitive, but at least it's a little bit more comprehensible. A little bit. So basically, Neil Breen created all the planets, and he comes back to Earth only to be disappointed in how shitty human beings are as a species. You see, Neil Breen is the ultimate moral authority, and he really likes it when people are good, and he really doesn't like it when people are bad. And the movie really feels as though it needs to emphasize which characters are good and which characters are bad, so the only characters you'll ever see are either exaggeratedly kind or exaggeratedly evil. Ah! What the hell, man? That's just not right. It's pretty much just a movie about Neil Breen being a superior Breen than everybody around him, interlaced with birdemic shock and terror levels of political commentary. Now that we've paid off our fellow elected representatives in the legislature, that environmental solar panel development bill will fail next week. So because the evil corporate businessmen sabotage solar development, this girl gets laid off. So how's she supposed to feed that fake baby now? Perhaps she should train to become a military sniper. No, instead her twin sister says she can hook her up with a stripper slash escort job. So she takes her to this gang filled with weirdos who only ever seem to stand around with their guns in the middle of the fucking road. And man, let me tell you, they are quite the immoral people. I get her first. So later the wheelchair man sees that the fake baby dropped something. Man, if that isn't a good deed, I don't know what is. Neil Breen, why don't you work your alien techno Jesus magic? Oh! Are you kidding me? This is literally the second film in a row where Neil Breen cures someone's cancer. So now the girl's twin sister decides she will also start hooking, and her boyfriend decides he will start stealing cars. But the gang gets mad that he's stealing cars on their turf, so they kill him in a very gritty and realistic way. Then they show her the body for some reason. <coughs> what? This damn piece of garbage? So now the gang finds out that there's an undercover cop amongst them. So naturally they give him the most epic beatdown ever captured on film. So naturally, Neil Breen steps in by freezing everyone in time to save this man. And then he crucifies them Home Depot style. Now obviously after that point, his work is done and he leaves, but not before some other really weird shit that I don't understand. What draws you to create those kind of images? I mean, baby heads in the desert? Um, I'll leave it up to the audience, the meaning of the little heads in the ground. Uh, the, the surreal quality of those. Well, it, it means whatever you want it to mean. I'm not here to tell you how to interpret the film. I'm telling you right up front, it has more than one meaning. Give us a second. Well, thanks for stopping by, Neil Breen. You were too good for this planet. Stop music courtesy by stop, stop music. Stop music dot fucking net. Fuck you.
And last but not least, we have the masterpiece known as Fateful Findings, starring Neil Breen. In this film, he tones down the narcissism just a tad and plays an actual human being instead of an alien super Jesus. Although he still has superpowers bestowed on him from a magical rock, and he does spend the whole movie being morally superior to everyone around him. He's pretty much the only character that's not a scumbag or drug addict. So the movie starts out with more free play music, yay! What's this kind of shot called again? A good one. <laughs> <laughs> we then see a storage locker and a big ass book that I guess someone's just sprinkling glitter over top of. We then see two kids running through a field and they then walk past what appears to be a repurposed prop from Double Down. They then find a mushroom that turns into a treasure. A treasure? So now the girl's moving away and they have their final goodbyes as awkwardly as possible. So this kid grows up to be Neil Breen and we see a shot of him talking on the phone with his wife. And by that I mean he's not saying anything at all but the way they filmed her makes it seem as though that's what's supposed to be happening. Oh fuck! <laughs> So he got hurt pretty bad, and now he's in a room that's supposed to look like a hospital. This is definitely someone's house. <laughs> oh, you know, you've never been to a carpeted hospital? Have I have those blinds. I have those blinds. Yeah, that's right. Check his pulse. If only he had some sort of a machine that could do that for you. So everybody else leaves, but luckily he's had the magic rock in his hand this whole time. You know, on second thought, I'm not really all that sure that Neil Breen's actually playing a human in this one, because apparently he doesn't need needles and he just absorbs shit through his fucking skin. Also, apparently they feel as though it's necessary to filter the oxygen through his bandages. You take off the mask, will you die? It would be extraordinary Yes! Oh, set up and delivery! So he leaves the quote-unquote hospital and all of a sudden some feet show up, only to immediately fucking disappear. So now we see the carpet in Neil Breen's home, which looks suspiciously similar to the carpet in the hospital. He hops in the shower and we get a romantic scene with him and his wife. <laughs> You know, the blood in this movie actually looks a lot better than in most movies. Congratulations, Neil Breen. You did it. Good job. So I can't believe it. I'm proud of you. Now he's in his office, and pretty much any time he's here, you can expect there will be some sort of violence against his laptops. <laughs> Now we're at his friend's house, and the carpet looks suspiciously similar to the other carpets in every other scene. And the blinds look suspiciously similar to the blinds in every other scene. What, what, what were the, uh, but if you don't mind, if you don't mind uh, talking about budget-wise, uh, ballpark, what, what were some uh, budget? budget, budget, producers, low-budget indie producers like myself should never talk about budgets. Oh, well, that's fine. Budget, yeah. budgets are really irrelevant. My, my immediate comment back to someone like you is, you know, I'm not going to tell you what the budget is. You tell me, and you don't have to tell me, but I mean <laughs> in your own head, you tell me what you think the budget was. You tell me what you think uh, budgetarily it took to create and make that film look the way it looks. Back at home, Neil Breen asks his wife to get him his pills. Where are my pills? Thank you. I don't need these. During the film, Neil Breen has several hallucinations with The Rock, wherein he is suddenly inside a room made out of garbage bags. It's a metaphor. Later, it seems as though Neil Breen has found the most irresponsible way to drink coffee with your laptop. <sighs> Coffee. <laughs> 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 
One of my favorite things about Neil Breen's films is just how fucking clumsy everyone is. People are always spilling shit, falling over, or just plain fucking up. I shit you not, all you gotta do is change the footage to black and white and all of a sudden you're watching an infomercial. Are you tired of this happening to you? There's got to be a better way! Are you tired of not being able to eat your tuna while you're driving? Do you find you ever get painful headaches that just won't go away? There's got to be a better way. I'm feeling less stable. Do you feel like you're always struggling to stay awake? <laughs> There's got to be a better way. Try Neil Breen, the only 100% doctor recommended and FDA approved way to cure all of your symptoms. Ugh. <sighs> So now he's having dinner with his friends and the porno quality acting becomes more apparent than ever. I'm hungry. I can't wait for dinner. Meanwhile, the film decides to emphasize what a piece of shit drunk the dad is. Can I have some wine, please? Wow, you're like not even gonna clean that up. So one of the subplots to this film is that Neil Breen is hacking the government to expose secrets. And I guess he didn't really know how he was gonna plant those seeds for the audience. Fuck it, he'll just say it out loud to himself. I'm going to continue hacking into these government systems to see what I can find out about all this national and international corruption I know is going on. So apparently Neil Breen's wife is a pill junkie and she's been stealing his medication right out of the toilet. Neil Breen says let's talk but then the scene ends and cuts to him on his laptop. Also apparently the last four keys he hit were with his mind. I'm done talking. What? Did you like follow him into this room to say that? Really? Okay, so it's pretty obvious he scavenged Craigslist for broken laptops at some point, and I guess after acquiring them, he decided he was going to get as much use out of them as possible. There are so many goddamn scenes that revolve around him abusing his laptops. I have to assume that this is the only reason the conversation moved to the office. Fast forward to a bit later, and they're already bickering at each other again. There is another girl. No, that is not true. So now we're having a barbecue by the pool. I should mention that this is the same pool from I Am Here. Now, it's during this scene where piece of shit drunk dad manages to pull this party trick. More importantly, this is where the quote unquote plot starts going somewhere, kind of. So this girl gets a call on her cell phone and I guess her ringtone is just two keypad beeps. If only there was a product that allowed me to have an extra pocket outside of my jeans! There's got to be a better way! So if you haven't guessed, this is the book from the beginning of the movie. It's a magical day! Apparently this girl aged a lot more gracefully than Neil Breen did. Apparently it was such a magical day that she keeps this fucking booklet inside her pocket everywhere she goddamn goes for 30 fucking years! I think of you every day. I think of you every day. Well, that explains that look he was given earlier. So now these two are fighting for basically no reason, and it eventually turns into that scene I showed earlier. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes! No, no, no! What you say? Mm, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. Mm, what you say? Mm, Somehow Neil Breen eventually manages to get inside the house. All right, now can we all imagine just how dramatic and emotional this must have been in Neil Breen's head when he was planning this out? Apparently it makes the scene even more dramatic if you get blood on your face. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? Later, Neil Breen is in an argument over the phone about publishing his book. He decides to throw shit at his laptop for good measure. That first book made a fortune for you. 
Later, Neil Breen and his long-lost mistress go back to that magical spot. Meanwhile, his wife stays at home and kills herself. Later, it seems as though he's adjusted to his replacement wife quite effortlessly. He decides to tell her about how he's hacking the government. Shortly after that, he starts feeling a sudden urgency to leak all of the non-specific information he's collected. I can't wait any longer. I'm not ready for this! But apparently somebody already knows what he's doing, and now they're kidnapping his replacement wife. Oh, 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 that guy! Oh, from his super secret <laughs> hacking. Hey, it's 90 minutes in and we have an antagonist. Great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired of this happening to you? Gun self-defense for women covers from basic to advanced knowledge on guns, from pistols to shotguns. This film also covers mace, knife protection, stun guns, knife protection, karate self-defense, mace, knife protection, mace, karate self-defense, baseball, bullying, karate self-defense, Bullying? Baseball! He shows up to the trailer outside a storage locker where she's being kept prisoner to find the kidnapper conveniently asleep on the job. He wakes him up to knock him out and then uses his magic powers to teleport into the room. He saves the day and then his house turns into paranormal activity for some reason. And now time for the most epic finale in all of cinematic fucking history. Neil Breen holds a press conference in front of the White House to talk about the files he'll be leaking. I have discovered more information than any hacker ever has. Ever. What I have found will shock you. And in response, we see a compilation of corrupt politicians and CEOs killing themselves. I'm afraid of going to prison. They now know my crimes. Don't do it! I resigned today as president of the bank. The bank. You can't make this shit up, people. If this isn't a happy ending, I don't know what is. So in conclusion, all of you need to start watching these movies right fucking now. Fateful Findings was easily my favorite with Double Down at a close second, but each of these films are special and entertaining in their own unique way. Now if I truly wanted to dissect these films and mention every single thing I see, this video would be hours long. I mean, there was a lot of shit that I didn't even mention. Partially because I want there to be plenty of observations that other YouTube reviewers can pick up. Guys, his movies are so fucking comedically exploitable you have no idea. The other reason why I left out so much is because I want everybody to experience these movies firsthand. There are so many common elements in each of his films that it's a shame no one's made a drinking game yet. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make one right now. I'm calling it Bringo. Bringo! Now it's up to you whether or not you want to make an actual bingo board out of it or just drink anytime one of these things happens, but here's everything from his films I noticed that I feel would be appropriate to include. Someone dropping something. Skull or skeleton. Fade effect. Neil Breen mentions or demonstrates his magic powers. An adult female character who is clearly wearing no bra. Repurposed prop or location. Hacking. Ghosts. Driving in the desert. Dead wife. Magical rock. Laser pointer. Stock footage. Characters shifting between old and young in the same scene. A topless woman laying face down. Ripped clothes. A shot of clothes hitting the floor or ground. Neil Breen talking to himself. Corporate businessman. Shot of someone's feet. Swimming pool. Blood on Neil Breen's face. Shirtless Neil Breen. Someone disappears through basic editing tricks. Violence against laptops. So if you watch the whole trilogy and take a sip of beer 
every time you see one of those things, you will die. But hey, at least you had fun, so fuck it. In all seriousness, Neil Breen clearly has a passion for what he's doing, and I want to see more of it. So everybody help him out and support the artist by purchasing one of his films. I mean, if you can figure out how to, that is. And just when you thought news couldn't get any better, he's got another film to be released this year. I am not of this earth. I am artificial intelligence from far into the future. I have taken on this human body in order to communicate with the humans. I can move from one time plane to another. Well, there you have it. We have truly been blessed with quite possibly the most important new voice in independent cinema. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Alien Space Jesus. The real human breed. probably looks very different and that's because I'm in Mark's office right now. Anyway, very special thanks to Bren Daniel who agreed to do some very short notice voice acting for that infomercial segment. I had already recorded it with my own voice, but I don't have the suave uh, Markiplier-esque voice that he does. So uh, go check out his channel. There's a link in the description. Uh, there's a video where he read the entire script to a B movie, and I know that that's a spicy meme right now. Also, uh, very fucking important crazy shit. Uh, we're getting our first t-shirts. I'm gonna have t-shirts now. It's been, what, like 10 years on YouTube total, including all my channels? As, as of June 20th, literally on the website for 10 years. I've had this film review channel since 2010, and this will be the very first YMS merchandise ever, and I can't believe it's taken so long. But part of the reason why it has taken up until this point is because I kind of wanted all the stars to align before signing on to something or making a kind of commitment like that. I know that there are websites like Teespring and Spreadshirt, but I wouldn't really have a level of communication with them since they're offering this service to so many people. I don't really know what the quality of their shirts are like. However, I have a friend that literally started his t-shirt company this year, and I decided to go through him because I've seen his shirts in person, I know he doesn't use cheap shit, and he actually uses good materials to print the shirts, and this way, at least, I'm able to have a level of communication with the person who's selling the shirts, too. So it's a win-win for everybody. The design is actually made by a good friend as well. You can check out her website. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, the reason why I'm not wearing one of these shirts right now is because they're literally two days away from being complete and printed. Uh, but I figured I would advertise them in this video anyway, because, I mean, why the fuck not? I'll show the t-shirt in a next v video or something so you can see it for yourselves. But here's the design. If this looks like something that you would want to wear on your face, go for it. Go for it. Do it. Eat it up. Eat it up. Sell out. Sell out. I'm selling out, guys. Everybody, I'm done. I'm done. I'm selling out. It's over. What, ha what happened, YMS? I thought... I thought you were against everything that in involved making any kind of money. That's that's what I remember. Seriously though, it's great that I'm doing this through a friend and not some random people I don't know. He was actually in this video that you just watched. He was one of the voices in that room full of people that I uh, blessed with Neil, Neil Breen's uh, holy trinity. Uh, he was the gayest sounding voice in the room. So that way, you know for a fucking fact that those are good quality clothes. Anyway, now that I'm done this, uh, I'm off to work some more on my 2014 list. Uh, 2014 just happens to be like one of the best years for movies ever, so it's taken longer than expected, which is why I decided to release this sooner uh, or work on finish this up before I was finished my 2014 list. Anyway, uh, just letting you know that it will literally be the longest review that I've, or sorry, the long well, actually probably both. It'll be the longest list that I've ever made. And my longest reviews have been lists, so it'll probably be the longest video on my entire channel. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, stay tuned. I uh, love you guys. Thank you so much, all you patrons on whichever side. I don't know if the camera's flipped or not. I guess uh, they're over here. Um, I don't know. Thank you guys so much, and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side.